And I'll just bring you a bit of an update, just hard to get the light right. I've got a window right above my workbench uh, where you're looking at now, so the sun's sort of coming in and out between the clouds, so it's playing with the light a bit, so it's going from dark to light. You'll have to sort of work with me on that one. I haven't done a video on the uh, Mazak for a little while, so I thought I'd just do a, a bit of an update of where I am. Now, a few things um, on the go at the moment, just working on the actual... Uh, tool turret at the moment so we sort of understand what a tool turret is on the cnc lathe you look inside a cnc lathe and you've got your turret where you, you've got your multiple tools in my case it's eight uh, most machines have 12 or the newer machines have 12 but on this machine it actually has eight which is probably enough but even whatever you have is never enough anyway with any cnc machine but um just take you for a quick walk through i won't show you too much because probably most of it doesn't even make much sense it's probably easier to teach you how to speak japanese than try to understand what, what you're actually looking at but um i just come back from the bearing shop just found a couple of bearings inside it just doing the normal things that i do with this machine stripping everything apart cleaning inspecting replacing bearing seals everything you know, i think most of you know the scenario by now if you've been following along um a couple of replacements down there ready for the two bearings that fit inside this housing here which actually probably makes absolutely no sense to you at all but these fit inside this unit here which is actually part of the drive unit onto this unit here so as i say it's probably making bugger all sense to you but i just show it to you anyway for those who are interested you've got some high load bearings on there being the tapered bearings the same as your wheel bearings in your car so it's a fairly high load part there was uh, tiny pieces of metal uh, in the actual oil from a uh, little spindle that actually spins around inside i think this is the actual part there it runs on this drum system here so it actuates in and out so this actually gives you your drive i won't as i say i won't try and explain the whole system so it'll turn it into a one hour video how to teach you know, to, you know, it's not an instructional video of how to rebuild a scene so it's just to give you an update of where i am so there's two bearings sit on there and they're exposed bearings as you can see there so the oil's been obviously little bits of metal break off from time to time i remember this is nearly a 30 year old machine or probably not that long now but it's been sitting in my shop for a little while now so it's probably been run for at least 20 years of service and things wear and tear and it was just little bits of metal in the oil so uh, when i opened it all up mostly just hydraulic oil runs in here it's all lubricated by hydraulic oil the whole the whole unit's just all hydraulic oil um so I just had that disassembled at the moment, uh, just replaced those couple of bearings. As soon as I seen there were some bearings in there, I thought, well, I can't help myself. As soon as I see bearings, I always like to rip them out and replace them. But let's just sort of show you that just as part of it. I might assemble it and just do another quick video to show you before I put it back on the machine, the actual um, the workings of it inside the back. So this will all be assembled as one unit when you come back in the next video, probably after this one. Not much else I can show you on the uh, Mazak probably mission at the moment. Just drop that light down a bit, as I say, that's that light coming through the window, sort of playing with my camera a little bit. Just try and get you up at an angle where it's not really affecting too much. I'll just sort of show you the turret itself, what we're talking about. A bit harder looking at a camera when you've got sun sort of shining in your eyes. Just try and lift up the light a little bit, just show you inside. Just bear with me. So what I've done is I've had to modify the lube system. Obviously, I've changed over from the NSK, which I've talked about in a previous video, to the high wind uh, linears. And obviously, when you change something, there's a bit, bit of stuffing around. It's not just a matter of just changing a couple of bolts. It's usually fairly major surgery you have to do, I'm trying to simplify it as much as I can. But um, normally, the lube systems, are the blocks themselves or the linear trucks or blocks as I call them um, uh, individually lubed but as long as we've got the lube system um, lubing each uh, linear block is the main thing that we need so I'll be going away from the individual ones as I say I've modified this uh, version here so I'll have one uh, oil line feeding this will, which will be a larger unit than what you're looking at the moment so these two will stay and it'll get rid of the bit of the spaghetti that's inside in here so you have another probably another uh, four at least four more lube lines like this they're about five mil diameter a bit smaller on the id so these run down into the actual uh, linear um, not linear uh, ball screw itself um if i find out what i'm talking about myself at first so i think i've already told you already i've had this um part hot tanked so just flush it all out uh, just to clean all the galleries out and everything like that more so and um, that was the main purpose of it so what i've done to just drop a white back again 
as I say, it's a pain in the ass shooting right, right below a window. Um, of course, the sun comes out when I start filming. Um, normally, the actual, I'll we'll go through what I'm, probably what's existing at the moment. So, the actual linear blocks bolt on uh, underneath here. As you can probably see the mounts there. If I get back far enough, you can see most of it. If you're not getting strays of sunlight. Um, you have Normally, you have the oil feeding in from the top. So, these port into the, the NSK blocks, which was on here. Um, and you have the loop system feeding into each block so they've got an obviously a loop system now obviously they'll, i've changed over to the high winds as i've mentioned already so there is a bit of stuffing around to get the lube in so i've made up this manifold here uh, to be able to lube um, those linear uh, linear slides so what i've done is just a pretty standard piece of uh, material nothing nothing too big deals just just a la sort of um air manifold you might see so i've just made this up and you can sort of see where it's ported across here we can see where it's been cross drilled so i've drilled down and then drilled across so it's feeding both of these ports so how that works now is that fitting i showed you above will feed this block which will actually i've got a drill and tap it mount on here it'll have two fittings come out here that elbow out and you can sort of see some lines i've been drawn on there just to plan my thinking out um i'll tee over run into this t-piece and then that'll run out to each linear block left and right so i'll just take you over to the actual machine now and show you what i'm talking about so it makes a bit more sense it's always hard to say what to show what not to show in videos i think i can just show you what things that i might be interested in if you guys are interested then you can watch or not watch that's up that's your choice but of course i'm losing the sun again now and back in the dark again um the actual linear blocks as you can see there the high winds ones that i've already shown you in, a, in another video earlier where i've swapped them over and i've and i've had to redrill the holes to match up with the nsk and modified as best as i can without uh, i didn't want to modify the actual mazak setup um, i modified the blocks instead of modifying the actual turret unit itself i did have plans of machining that to match these blocks but then i've sort of have second thoughts about that i thought i should be modifying the actual machine i should be modifying the thing that i'm changing to suit so as i've already shown you i've had to uh, drill and tap these which was which was fun uh, they are case hardened and it, it is fairly uh, high grade uh, steel underneath too so um, it was fun to, to um, drill and tap these but now that it's done now it's good um it's one job that i wasn't looking forward to doing um that lube system i was talking about for the actual ball screw which is our last on the mazak as it was i haven't changed that that where that blue tape is that's those two oil lines will feed this um, ball screw and then as i was saying they've you have this block that was just in front of where this mounts on uh, where those oil lines were coming through there's that block or manifold that i've made so you have a line coming out and it'll tee across to each one so it'll tee across to here you have that t-piece in the middle here and that'll feed each block the only thing i found was a bit of a pain in the ass though was with these um, high wind blocks you can buy these actual fittings from from the supplier but um, the stupid size of the thread that came up with, I was trying to work out what was, when I was trying to measure the size of the thread, I thought they would have been just standard M6 threads because they were just 6mm thread or 6mm size, but they finished up being M6 by 0.75. I never heard such a stupid size thread in my life. I thought I thought already 1mm um, pitch would probably be enough, but for some silly reason they decided to make it M6 by 0.75. Maybe good for watchmakers possibly, but no good for bloody people like me trying to rebuild a machine. So I had to buy these special fittings from uh, the high wind dealer. Uh, I'm not sure if Festo had these type of fittings. They're just basically a, a pushing fitting, like a Festo fitting. I didn't bother looking in the catalogue. These guys had them, so I just got them. And the Festo guy is an hour drive away, and these guys are about a 20 minute drive away, so it was easy to go and get them from them. And they had them in stock. But uh, for the four of them, I was about just over $100 for the four of them, which was probably a little bit steep, but it keeps me going on the job. That was the main thing. If I was trying to save money on this machine, I probably shouldn't have rebuilt it in the first place, so no good worrying about it now. Uh, what's done is done but it's probably just the lube system as i say with the as i tried to explain before you see those holes in the actual casting itself the uh, nsk is poured in through the top so they just feed in through the top and then they cross drill to the center and then they drill to one end so a la what's here so they actually still feeding from the end but they're actually fed from the top not from the side a la sort of your uh, with exactly how the 
uh, high wind units are fed they just feed straight in from the side straight away much more easier this porting is a pain in the ass I could have done it but being so hard a material I didn't want to stuff around trying to uh, drill down through this and then drill through the side cross drill and then and then cross drill and then drill back again to try and feed this system because the actual balls uh, the actual where the ball race is I'd have to actually drill down at a slight angle, which I won't get into the whole detail. I was going to show that in a video, but I didn't finish up doing it, so it didn't matter. Uh, I utilised the actual fittings, but I had to cross drill on an angle because of the, the way the uh, high wind setup is. You can see the, the different profile there. The race is very high up. One of the, re the return race is very high up for running through this case here, if you understand sort of linear slides. Hopefully this is making much sense, which it probably bloody isn't. But I couldn't actually, uh, it wasn't as simple just setting it up in a vise and drilling across. I have to drill across at a slight angle to actually pour it to the centre and then pour it out to the ends. I'm thinking, well, it's just way too much mucking around. So I've gone with that manifold setup, which you guys have just seen. I'll just take you down to the tailstock now and just show you some other things that I've done. Not much else has really changed on the machine since the the um, other things that you've seen, but just working my way through and just trying to find. So I've cleaned these up. I've stoned these surfaces up, which you guys have seen in the other video. Um, some of it's still a bit etched away. I couldn't go. <coughs> excuse me. I couldn't go down too far. Um, I thought about maybe getting it ground, but I didn't want to go crazy because I probably won't use a tail stock that much on a CNC. As I say, 90% of the stuff you do is up at the actual chuck, but I wanted to make sure I left that option open. If I needed to use the, the tail stock, I still wanted to have that option. So just going through and just uh, blasting and painting things, you can see one part there is painted in the black. Just had some black paint in the gun at the time, so these are all being zinc plated first, and then I've just painted over the top with that black two-pack. It was just what was current. Um, you can sort of see the one at the back there is just still sit sitting in that zinc plating and just painted that black over the top that one's at the back so you don't even see I just I just like just paint that one black had some paint left over in the gun um try to get you back a little bit so it makes a bit of sense You're bloody up too close um I did explain a little bit to show you a little bit of what I've done with the tail stock now it's on um as I say these guys can watch or not watch it's totally up to you um as I mentioned before this unit drives uh, is driven hydraulically driven in position and the actual spindle itself is driven hydraulically driven as well that cap that I showed you in probably the last Mazak video that I was painting which is just up on the end there so I'll just take you back around to the end and just show you that not that I really need to but just as I say it's part of the re Mazak rebuild you can watch or not watch what you want what you want what you want to watch yourself you can decide uh, so that's on there now so that was the actual um get a tiny bit more light in there um that was um that you know i was washing out in the parts washer and repainted and i was showing you a bit of instruction video on on how to how to spray paint <laughs> but um the drive unit for this is mainly what i want to show you it's probably a little dark every time i try to film the sun keeps going in and out so um the drive unit, as you can probably see, like looks like a bicycle type chain that runs along the side of the unit there, or on the side of the rail, um, is the drive unit to pull the uh, the actual tail stock you know, to and from the actual spindle itself. So it's hydraulically driven. You can see a couple of fittings come in on the right hand side there. So it just drives this gear here, which pulls the chain backwards and forwards. I've sort of got it sitting loose at the moment because I might have to take the tail stock off uh, or the, lift the rail up so I can shim it. I don't know. I'm going to go yet I did uh, remove some material I don't know how much the center height has changed there is a little bit of adjustment in the actual spindle itself I might bring you back in a video to show you how I line the tail stock up to the actual uh, chuck itself so to get that center running again because I've disassembled the whole unit so as I say I won't explain too much in here it'll make a bit more sense if I get around to talking about that so I might have to actually shim this up to get the height right I don't know yet as I say I've stoned these surfaces so I've probably changed the height a little bit but it's enough to probably upset the center height so I've left this unit um, unbolted there's some sheet metal covers you can probably see one of them sitting in the side there that actually sits on the side here that covers that chain normally but I've left it loose uh, I did have it assembled up just to make sure it fits together right so everything goes together well but the it covers up all these mounting bolts you can see a bolt down there that holds the actual um, the actual bed 
of the uh, the tail stock, which I've shown you, in, as I say, kept referring back to in the previous video, which is uh, that one we're sitting on the bench where I've blasted and painted it. So this is the unit bolted back on now. So the next thing probably after that now is most of this is done now. Um, probably just some hoses to fit off on the actual tail stock itself. Um, get the turret done, which I'm working on at the moment. Get that done, get that mounted back on those linears. And then after I get the turret back on, I can get all that all bolted back on into one piece, which will be a fair bit of work. And then probably the next thing to do is probably just put that green panel in back on that I've shown you. I've got to get that blasted and paint. I've still got a little bit of um, body work or shipment or work to do on that to repair a couple of things on it that were damaged um, in its normal service. A few knocks and dints and things like that I wanted to fix. Um, that I've still got to do on that, but get that powder coated and get that bolted back on. I can start to run all my services from this end and services from the other end. So you bring the power from this end up to the behind the spindle and you're bringing your hydraulics from behind the spindle up to here. So it's sort of like got to run all those services and it runs in that sheet metal panel, which, I've, which I did mention that one was the green panel that was standing up against the wall. But um, yeah, that'll probably do this video. Not that there was much to really show you. I just sort of haven't done one a video for a while. I just wanted to update you all where I was with it now. Then you can sort of see through to the linears there. Not this really big deal. You know, the bits and pieces just sitting through there that I'm just sorting through and just finding out what I need and what I don't need to bolt back on. That's probably the thing at the moment. Just finding out stuff I can bolt back on is probably the hassle at the moment. And just keep working away until I get it going again. All right, I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Okay, bye for now.